whether he right or he's wrong. But you know, I'm just going to chill back here. You know what I'm saying? Wait for the shit to fizzle down. And, you know what I'm saying? Fizzle down. Jay Z has become one of the biggest legends in the history of hip hop. But that definitely doesn't mean everyone has to like him. He's been no stranger to a big list of feuds with people from Nas to Tupac. There's a reason for that. He hasn't always been a titan of the industry like he is now. There was even a period where the only person to bring new life to his career was an underpaid producer by the name of Kanye West. But perhaps his most famous beef is one that a lot of people might not even know much about. Havoc and Prodigy of Mob Deep have always made their anger at Hove known. But what did he do to provoke it? Well, it turns out that it has roots in the very beginning of hip-hop's mainstream success. One of the biggest divides in the hip-hop culture has always been the East Coast versus the West Coast problem. The rivalry has always been extremely bitter, and both sides have legitimately important claims as to which is more important. Both old school and new school hip hop have their roots in New York City. While a lot of people think that gangster rap came out of Los Angeles, it was actually Ice T from New York who released what's widely regarded as the first gangster rap song. Another major influence in the genre was Schooly D from Pennsylvania. We really can't talk about gangster rap without talking about people like N.W.A. though. While the genre existed before them, it was they who really popularized the genre. From there, we get people like Tupac and Biggie, which is where our story really starts. The feud between these two runs deep. And includes their managers Suge Knight and P. Diddy, respectively. While there had been something boiling under the surface for a long time, it exploded after the untimely death of Tupac, and it only got worse after Biggie died under mysterious circumstances. Rumors floated around, and people whispered that maybe it was the rap beef that led to death for both these two rappers. Up until then, dissing the other coast was completely harmless, and most of the time, nothing really came of it. After that, it was a big taboo. The death of these two rappers shocked the world and pretty much thoroughly destabilized the industry. I mean, this beef continues even now on the internet. One user said, Fuck New York. Let's start 2022 with an East Coast, West Coast war. Another rap fan pointed out that we're in yet another rough period for hip hop, shortly after the loss of Young Dolph. They said, I never thought an era of hip hop would bring more deaths and than what went down in the 90s via East Coast, West Coast beef or whatever. So much loss in the hip hop community these last few years, this is incredibly sad. Another inciting incident for the whole beef featured no one else but the West Coast rapper Snoop Dogg. On the set of the music video for the song New York, New York, tragedy struck in the form of a drive-by. The song was originally supposed to be showing love for the East Coast and all the influence it had during the birth of hip-hop and the great rappers that it continuously produced. That's not quite how it panned out though. After the drive-by, Snoop switched gears completely. Instead of singing New York's praises, he tore New York down. Literally. The music video featured burning cars and the biggest landmarks in the city being kicked over. As expected, he got some serious backlash for the whole thing. In response to the whole thing, Havoc and Prodigy brought some of other New York rappers on for the sake of recording a response. The track released was LA LA. There was also another track from Mob Deep, Drop a Gem on them, aimed directly at Tupac. After he passed away, they pulled the song off the radio out of respect for the deceased rapper. Everything had cooled down for a little while, and things were okay. While there was definitely some tension between the two coasts, things weren't nearly as bad as they had been just a few years earlier. That is, until the release of a track by the young New York MC who went by the name of Jay-Z. Jay and DMX dropped a track called Money, Cash, right as the whole feud had just begun to feel like it was really settling down. The line that caused the most trouble was definitely this one. While y'all play a hatin', we in the upper millions. What's the dealings? It's like New York's been soft ever since Snoop came through and crushed the buildings. I'm trying to restore the feelings. F the law. Keep dealing. So basically, he's calling out New York for not keeping the beef going. Obviously, Havoc and Prodigy have a major problem with this. First of all, there's the fact that Jay-Z wasn't really even in the industry in the middle of the climax of the West Coast versus East Coast view. Like, he basically just showed up and called out an entire city, which was his city, for being too soft. Then he acts like he's about to make the whole thing pop off again, which, for real, isn't something that either side wants. It was honestly just a case of Hove having no clue how to read a room. In a recent interview with Complex, Mob Deep actually came out to address the situation directly since they had such a public history having issues with Jay-Z. Prodigy said, that's why we took offense when Jay-Z came out years later. After everything died down and people lost their lives, he came out with a song, Money Cash where he had that line, it's like New York's been soft ever since Snoop came through and crushed the buildings. We took offense to that. How are you talking now? 
we was out there risking our lives. This shit was on and popping, and we were still out there doing shows. This dude wasn't around. He had nothing to say at that time, he recalled. That was kind of crazy that you just come out of nowhere talking about some shit that you weren't nowhere around for, talking about you were bringing back the feeling. We took offense, so we said something about it. That's how the whole shit sparked with him. It's easy to understand where Prodigy is coming from here. It definitely doesn't seem like it's his place to speak on that kind of thing when Prodigy was out doing shows in the middle of a cold war. He could easily have been targeted at a show, and plenty of rappers were. After the release of Money Cash Prodigy pretty much made it an open deal that he had a beef with Jay. While a bunch of other people just saw a legend in the making, Prodigy saw a guy who was sticking his nose where he shouldn't be, potentially making a lot of enemies for himself and other rappers from New York. He also started beef with Nas by bringing him into the mix. Nas is one of the most uncontested legends of that era as well, especially after the release of his album Illmatic. Part of the competition is just rivalry as to who is the king in New York rap, and a lot has to do with this beef between Jay and Mob Deep. But after the feud with Nas started, the whole Mob Deep thing kind of fell off to make room. That being said, Jay's actually walked back a lot of the bars he spit throughout the beginning of his career. Shortly after Prodigy died back in 2017, Jay finally spoke on what had gone down between him and Mob Deep perhaps for the first time since he decided he could let the whole thing cool off. In an interview, he shared his thoughts on that situation from years past, saying, I had super respect for Prodigy. In order for me to spar with you, really spar, I gotta respect you in some way. I gotta respect you. I sampled him on my first album, so you know I was aware of him and uh, I had a respect for him. We spoke, me and him spoke before he passed. I saw him in a club maybe five years ago. He just came over and we kicked it. It's just sad. Blessings to his family. It's sad. Young, young man. Havoc also did a recent interview where he weighed in on the whole thing and Prodigy's passing. When asked about the whole debacle, he explains that he didn't really want to go into it with Jay. He wanted things to fizzle out. Since he wasn't being dissed directly, he wanted to be an ally instead of make an enemy. Havoc was in the studio with Nas and Prodigy almost constantly. So while he didn't have beef directly, he was kind of pulled into it despite not really wanting to have any part of it. Prodigy or whatever, whatever. When we finally got around Jay-Z, I felt funny like I really had beef with him. He also points out that if he ever wanted to work with Jay, he couldn't. That's really unfortunate. One of the best producers in the game at the time working with one of the hottest rappers in the industry could have made for an incredible album. Unfortunately, it wouldn't ever come to pass, and we'll always have to wonder what it could have sounded like. While the East Coast vs. West Coast still flares up from time to time, in part thanks to Kendrick Lamar's verse on Control, it seems like the situation has simmered down a lot from where it was at the peak. It's honestly really refreshing to know that Jay and Prodigy were able to sit down and kick it like nothing had ever happened a little bit before Prodigy passed away, even if they didn't exactly hash out their differences. The beef has had a few consequences for fans. One dude on Twitter pointed out that he didn't even check out Mob Deep forever because he assumed they were corny. A dumb story about myself, I didn't really listen to hip hop when I was younger, and even when I started to, I didn't give Mob Deep a chance for a long time. Why? Because of Takeover by Jay-Z. I assume they must be uncool, which is weird because I listen to Nas a lot. A lot of people have also tried their best to pay tribute to Prodigy, just adding to his legacy. On one video, a fan commented, R.I.P. Prodigy. I'm a fan of both Prodigy and Jay-Z, but Prodigy probably my favorite rapper of all time. Havoc always played it safe, but P expressed whatever he was feeling and didn't bite his tongue. He was a rebel. What do y'all think, though? Was that okay of Jay to say back in the day, given the gravity of the situation? Or should he have just reeled himself back a little? Was Bob Deep right for getting so upset about everything? Or should they have just let Jay do his thing? Let me know what you think down below. Make sure you peep this next one, too.